I will say things like, well, I know my rights, I know my, nobody can trample on my rights. And my husband will be like, sis, who is trampling on your rights? What are you talking about? Are you dreaming? Hey guys, you're welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new to the channel, I am Ivy Acne. You're all welcome back to this channel where we talk about relationships, lifestyle, makeup, fashion, and a lot more. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do me the favor of clicking right down at the subscribe button. And do not forget to turn on the notification bell. So whenever I post a video, you will be informed. In this video, I'm going to be talking about some mistakes I made and realized within my three years of marriage. These details may be helpful for newly married people or even young people trying to build strong relationships. So do not go anywhere. Keep watching. mistake I made and was making in my marriage was not being able to manage my anger issues. It's very normal that each individual has some degree of anger in them. But now, if you don't know how to manage that anger, it's going to affect your relationships with people a lot. I, in person, when I got married, that was a really, really big issue for me. There were some times when I would get angry and I would say so many things, I would do so many things. And the funny thing about this is, even when my husband would tell me, try to control your anger, and I will be like, Please, we all get angry. There's nobody who doesn't get angry. We're all angry. And I'll be justifying myself. I didn't even feel like I have to try to control it because I just felt like I was behaving normal. At first, I didn't even realize how bad this was affecting my marriage because there'll be times when certain things will happen and my husband will just hold back because he knows that if he has to tell me or if he has to do anything about it, I'm going to react with anger. So that alone made him withhold or withdraw so many things and as time passed on i started understanding the situation more and understanding that my anger wasn't really really helping me rather it was destroying my marriage it was ruining my marriage and taking away my happy times i would have been spending with my husband the worst thing about anger is anger will disgrace you anger will take out the beast in you you'll do things that after you become sober they will tell you and you'll be like really me sometimes my husband will tell me do you know why you're angry you did this to me i'll be like me really can I do that actually? Like, I'll really be surprised. And sometimes in my quiet corner, when I sit down and I remember the things I said in anger, I become so, so ashamed. Anger will make you say terrible things and do terrible things, which can actually cause a lot of friction in your marriage. I used to feel that after I do this, I could just say sorry. Yes, yeah, saying sorry is really, really good. But there are certain acts and words that you tell your partner or you do to your partner that sorry isn't just going to be okay. It can or may leave a mark on their hearts, on their heads, and it's not really good for the marriage. So as time went by, I started realizing that my anger was ruining my marriage. My anger was ruining my relationship with my husband. There's a saying that whenever you're angry, do not react. Go to a quiet corner. Do not talk. Do not say anything. Honestly, that saying is really true. If you try this just once in your life, you will see that it really, really makes sense. Because most of the reactions that you react when you're angry, they are mostly wrong things that you probably regret after doing it. So when situations happen, when things happen that take you to that level, the best thing to do is to just try as much as possible. It's not easy to calm down. And when you calm down, you will have a cool head to be able to think straight. And whatever you do or say at that time will really, really come from your mind and not just as a result of anger. The second mistake I made was over complaining or talking more than carrying out action. I'm naturally a very outspoken person. If I'm hurt or something is not okay by me, I say it there and then how it is. And whenever I see an error or I see something wrong in anything, I always, always point it out and try to correct it. It's really, really good for couples. It's a good trait for couples, correcting your partner's errors. But trust me, when you overdo it, it becomes nagging. I was fond of always complaining whenever I see any wrong thing and I was really really overdoing it more than carrying out actions that can actually help your partner into correcting his or her behavior or correcting what he or she has done. Action that say speaks louder than words. Sometimes over complaining or over talking or stressing on a particular point instead makes it worse. At the point I started realizing that this aspect of mine was actually ruining my marriage because I noticed that it was really affecting my husband. And whenever he tells me I wouldn't even want to hear, I'll be like, you don't want to be corrected. Meanwhile, I too was the same, but I didn't realize it because he didn't complain because he is not much of a talker like me. And the over complaining seemed like I was perfect and he was not, which is not good. The next mistake I made or was making in my marriage was comparing my husband to other people. Many people, especially women, are really, really guilty of this point. Normally, everybody has a standard of behavior that he or she wants the partner to behave in. So if your partner isn't behaving in this way, you may be tempted to start comparing. Oh, look at this person. He, he's doing this for his wife. I was guilty of that. Sometimes I'll watch even a movie 
and I'll compare my husband. I'll say, look at how that man is treating his wife. Why can't you also treat me the same way? Forgetting to know that they are fight also that that man doesn't have that my own partner has. So, so with time, I realized that instead of this encouraging him to act better, it was making him to shy away. When you compare your partner to someone, it makes your partner feel unappreciated. What you could actually do is like cite examples in a nice and polite way, not just comparing them completely like that. I got to realize that everybody is unique in his or her own way. There are also good things about your partner that the other person does not have. So you can't just judge people and compare people like that. The next mistake I was making in my marriage was overstressing or overemphasizing on my rights as a woman. It's good for you as an individual to acknowledge your rights. When you're in a relationship with a person who really respects you and who really respects those rights, why then do you have to still keep on insisting on those rights? Sometimes, even in conversations, even without me knowing, I will say things like, well, I know my rights, I know my, nobody can trample on my rights. And my husband will be like, sis, who's trampling on your rights? What are you talking about? Are you dreaming? The thing is, nowadays, there's a lot of abuse marriage stories, the rights of women are being trampled on. So, it has just made women to be so conscious. Even when you have a very mature partner who respects you, you still feel the need to insist on those rights. That's exactly what was happening to me. But that aspect of mine wasn't really helping because it's not really good. You could start instead putting ideas into your partner's head, which is not healthy for your marriage. I also learned that no matter how educated, no matter how classy, no matter how much you have as a woman, it's very, very important for you to submit to your husband. Give him that full respect. Honor him as the man and the head in your life. Trust me, it's going to open a lot of doors for you. If you are with an understanding and mature man, trust me, if you submit to your man, you are going to enjoy your marriage. You are going to enjoy your relationship. Submitting doesn't mean you become a fool, no. Submitting doesn't mean you won't carry out your activities. Submitting doesn't mean you become a fool, no. Submitting just means giving your partner the full respect and acknowledging him as the man in your life. This is one thing that almost every man needs in a woman. With time, I got to realize that when you give a man the full respect, right, he will give you that respect in double folds. He will pamper you, he will treat you like a queen. In fact, you will indirectly become the king in your relationship. When you give him that respect, you have pressed his mumu button and you are going to enjoy your relationship. But it doesn't apply to just every man. I'm talking of men who are really responsible and mature. The next mistake I was making in my marriage was being incorrigible. Not accepting my own errors, always putting up arguments, always putting up defenses. Whenever my partner wants to correct me, I'll always look for something to see. I always want to justify myself. That was something that I realized I was ruining my marriage. The next mistake I was making was not actually saying I'm sorry on time. When you hurt your partner, accept your faults and say sorry on time. All those dragging, playing games, it doesn't really help. If you hurt your partner, accept your fault and apologize, it's going to save so much. They say a stitch in time saves nine. The next mistake I was making in my marriage was transferring aggression. Whenever I'm angry at something, I just transfer the aggression to everybody, including even my own partner. And this was really, really affecting us. It was really affecting our relationship. I finally came to realize that if you have issues, if you are dealing with issues, talk about it or try to control it rather than transferring it to other people who were not even involved in it. The next mistake I was making was not being prayerful about the most little details. Most times when we want to pray, we think that we should pray only about big things like God, please give me a job, please give me money. We don't pray about the little things. We don't actually pray about our own little things like behavioral problems, uh, problems that we face like in our day-to-day -day life. We just think that they are minute things. But trust me, it's very important to pray even about the most little things. Tell God, communicate to God, tell God about what you're facing, tell God about the challenges you face, tell God about your errors, tell God about your own flaws, so that God can intervene and help you fight your battles. So I'm going to end this video here. I hope this helps someone out there. Thank you all so much for watching and see you all in my next video.